working from home where every day is bring your kid to work day. It's a jungle out there, and if you don't have the right tools and mindset to balance work, family, and other responsibilities, you may give up. Black Moth Radio gives you the upper hand in starting and managing your ideal lifestyle with your own business, doing what you do best from home. So grab the nearest ink pen and prepare to take notes because this show is jam-packed with discoveries, tips, and experiences to help you through your journey. Here is Robin Bull. And we are back with part three of the Super Sunday. See, I really do know what day it is show. It's July 16th, 2017. And this is the, although it's part three of the show, it's part two of education and minimum wage. And we were still talking about education and my wonderful husband, Danny, was telling us all about Despite the fact that he went to the good schools and I went to the shitty schools, how he would leave school and sneak off onto a college campus and sneak into the big classes to get his education. And I'm just summarizing what we talked about last time because I know some some people make excuses and they're lazy and don't actually want to, you know, go back and listen to stuff. And I talked about how I would walk miles both ways in the rain, in a snowstorm, eight miles or something to go to the library because back in my day we didn't have the internet and 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 overall what we're talking about is how if you want to get a good education even if you don't go to college or don't want to go to college can't go to college whatever it's on you and that's pretty much what i was saying that's pretty much what my story was getting at was even if you can't afford to go to college you realize it'd probably take about four to six weeks before a college professor even going to realize you're not one of his students. If you really want to get get it, there's a way to do it. There is. And, you know, you don't even have to look for a more traditional education, although, regardless of what you want to do in life, um, it doesn't even have to be seriously professional. Like, everyone has an idea of what they think about when you hear the word professional. Not everything requires a degree, but there are some things that you should probably still get a good grasp of, (laughs) regardless of what you choose to do, like communicating with your clients. Um, Basic math, and the only reason why I bring that up is because if you're going to start a business, you're going to have to know how to at least keep your own books. You can hire a bookkeeper, but you're probably not going to do that right away because it's a pretty big expense, honestly. So, you can't because of the way that the schools work they work the way that they do because well uh, I'll give you what they tell you and then I'll tell you my real opinion on the matter (laughs) the reason why schools all have the same basic standards is because as far as they're concerned and the state is concerned that's how they go about making sure that everybody gets a quote fair end quote education But the fact of the matter is, at least as far as I'm concerned, they're just educating everybody to be compliant little voters who go out, work their 9 to 5, pay their taxes, and, you know, regardless of how you feel about taxes, it's the law, and if you're self-employed, you still need to pay your taxes. I'm not saying become self-employed and don't pay taxes. That's not what I'm saying. (laughs) What I'm saying is, unless, if, if you really want to think outside of the box, And I'm not saying go and drop out of school either, if you're in school right now. I'm saying you have to take your education into your own hands. Otherwise, you know, that's really all you can do if you want to be successful, is you have to put in the work to make sure you know what you need to know to do it. Yep. (laughs) Uh, There's not really a whole lot to say about that besides, you know, also kind of goes back to your whole make a plan work your plan and stop making excuses yeah it's the same thing and I think that's really what kills me especially with people are going out and getting an education and they don't you know then they they do all planning they get the degree and then they end up you know not being able not succeeding at their business plan at whether it be work from home or whatever and you're just I'm sitting there going okay you went you just had 
two years Minimal. of planning, of learning to plan, and you have yet to learn how to make a plan. You know, they say, how long does it take to create a habit? 40, 20, 21 20, to 30 days. 21 to 30 days to create a habit. You've had two years of creating a habit that you apparently didn't bother to pay attention to. That's so, sad. So then, you know, everybody equates people who make minimum wage to people who didn't get an education. Um, and, and when people say that, they're, they're talking about high school, they're talking about going on to college. And the fact of the matter is a lot of the blue collar trades pay more starting out the entry level you know wage started starting out you'll make more in a blue collar trade generally than you will doing just about anything else you know here in our state it would cost minimum of hundred and twenty thousand dollars to go to law school and that's after you have your four-year degree right well in our state getting out the average salary for a new lawyer is thirty thousand dollars or you know you could go get your heat and air certification and make a lot more money than that just straight out of the chute if you can get the right job oh yeah I, it's ridiculous I mean in our state to equate education with money is yeah. a ridiculous concept to me it, it really is and our state's probably the worst in the world to do that with because you know like, like she said you're Getting out of law school, making thirty-five thousand for the year, after you spend one hundred twenty thousand dollars just to go to law school. Don't forget, you know, when the lawyer syndrome kicks in and they go out and buy this great big new house and yeah. these expensive cars, and I see it happen, and I just sit there and I'm but, like, "What are you doing, you idiot?" But six months later, they're having to pay the guy who only went to school for six months to come fix their air conditioning on their brand new house because it went out, and they're having to pay him like two thousand dollars and he's pocketing most of that or they're having to pay the, call. yeah and they're, they're having to pay the auto mechanic who went to school for maybe two years you know three thousand dollars because his mercedes went out and it takes that special tool to fix yeah man if you're gonna go into the mechanic side of things go into those foreign cars i'm telling you Ugh. i'm telling you that's where the money's so, at so our state is really the world's worst of a of Edu how much education you get equals how much you're going to get paid because our state will pay for a good auto mechanic and we'll pay a lot for a good air conditioning guy air conditioning repair guy it's because it's hot woman. yeah because you know we don't well frankly we just don't use attorneys very often our state's kind of bad about that no we use them it's just that you know uh, I'm using attorneys just as a price comparison. And the thing is, when you go to law school, you want to make the best grades possible because you want to try to get work at the best firm possible so you make the most money. Right. I worked in administration in law school. I've taught law for paralegals. And with law school, the way it works is your A students, they, they end up making, you know, they, they get the internships and things of that nature. They become your regular associate attorneys making thirty, forty, maybe fifty thousand a year in our state for their first few years, unless they go and hang out a leaf, you know. But then, yeah, it's iffy even then if you don't know what you're doing in business. And so your B students, they boss around the A students. Your B students are the ones that end up being like the senior attorney. Your C students, those are the ones that end up being your judges. And your D students go back and teach. Because those who can do, those who can't, they say, teach. Yeah. Me, I could. I just got tired of the shit. But the fact that we equate education with money, it's not really the right way to go about it. Because the thing is, education may get your foot in the door doing something that you really want to do or that you don't really want to do. Whatever. But the way that you ultimately start making money is because of what you know, what you learn along the way. It's like when... You know, when Jacob told us he wanted to do diesel mechanics, I, I, I was all for it. You know, it's money. I know it's money in this state, so it's like, yeah, get it. <laughs> it's money in this state depending on where you work. I, I think he's got the wherewithal to 
figure it out in the long run. And, you know. I hope. But I was like, yes, you know, because he's chosen something. He's not out, I'm going to be a butterfly collector and sharpen colored pencils. But then... I'm going to organize <laughs> people's closets for a living. Which I found out was a real job in it New is. York. Kim Kardashian used to do that for a living for Paris Hilton. Oh. I read that online somewhere. See, I just heard it was some, like, actual <laughs> profession in New York. And I was sitting there wondering to myself, how... Because you hear about how small the apartments are, so a closet... Everybody lives in the closet. A Your closet the could closet, be, like, five more bedrooms. Yeah, but the closet's smaller than the room. How much help do you need to organize it? That's sad. So, ungracefully transferring over to minimum wage... I'm never real good with the. Are we going? To, are we going to discuss a Washington stake here? No, not necessarily. Just minimum wage in general. I, I thought you know because we hear a lot about minimum wage. Um, and I know when I say that, people who are listening, they're thinking about people who are flipping their burgers, making their chicken. Most um, of them make more minimum wage. Not a lot in this. Not in our state. Not a lot. Some do. Like um. One or two Zaxby's chicken, they start off at ten dollars an hour, but there are some but other. The only one that still pays minimum wage is McDonald's around here. Actually, the one by our house starts at almost nine dollars an hour now. Oh, well, they've gone up, have they? But with that being said, everybody thinks about something when we think of minimum wage, right? Um, and then you hear people complaining, I, "I can't make it on minimum wage," and what's the first thing people tell them? Go out and get a better job, right? I mean, here lately it's been more. We need just. We just need to raise minimum wage, which I think is a horrible idea. But it, it's and I know bad somebody, in a business sense, but if you think I, about it... I know it, somebody's screaming at their podcast right now because I said that. But. It, they are, but it's bad in a business sense, which we'll talk about in a second. But from the sense of just a regular person living in society, you know, the price of everything keeps going up and even people who have jobs that make more than minimum wage right they're not self-employed but they make more a little more than minimum wage they're not getting raises like they used to and so their money's not going as far and and to expect someone who can't get a different job for whatever reason they don't have the education they don't have the experience they have a non-violent criminal record or even a violent criminal record but it happened you know right there, there's time in there but to think that you know we tell these people to go get a better job but they can't the jobs aren't there or they're not qualified for them and and you know to tell someone well then you should have gone to school well you don't really understand the educational system if you have certain charges on your record which I know then people are gonna say well then don't get those charges uh, how about we just reform the criminal code so some of this ridiculous shit isn't a charge just give them <laughs> a ticket and go on <laughs> but you know like when I first moved back here from Arkansas and Brian and Jacob were little 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 I needed a job and everywhere I went I didn't have a college degree at the time I just had a ton of office experience and I'd worked in insurance and I'd done all these things I was fairly young and I went to Subway because I needed a job and I was told no because I was over qualified so no, I couldn't find a job at all yeah uh, there's always somebody that's going to be there, you're always going to have that either you're over qualified or under qualified and sometimes you get stuck in that that rut where you're over qualified to do things like fast food but you need money yeah but they won't hire you because you're overqualified, and then you're underqualified to get, you know... Or you can't get it for some other reason, and it's... But overall, what I'm, I'm getting at there is to tell people just go get another job. They necessarily can't, and even if they can, oftentimes that money... I mean, if you're listening to this, think about what you make now, and think about, are you making the ends meet? Are you getting what you want out of it? Think about the price of going and buying groceries and electricity and all these things that are needed. Now think about whether or not you could do that yourself if you had to make minimum wage and you had a family to support. Yeah. So from that perspective, you know, minimum wage should go up just based on the fact 
so that people can provide for their families. I mean, that's, but from the business side, it's a totally different story because what people tend to forget, businesses are not going to absorb the cost of minimum wage going up. They are going to pass that on to the consumers. And so, you know, we pay, what do we pay for a half gallon of milk the other day? Do you remember? Two fifty. So we paid $2. No. Yeah, that was a half gallon, yeah. So we paid like $2.50 for a half gallon of milk. Now, if minimum wage goes up, you know, the grocery store, they're not going to absorb the cost on their end. They're going to pass it on to us. And so we're going to pay more. And so the person that was making, although that particular grocery store starts out above minimum wage, but I'm just using them as an example because we were there recently. Right. Let's say they pay minimum wage, though. Which for a teenager, fine, whatever. Um, but if you're an adult and you're thinking, oh, great, you know, now I can afford to buy milk and the price goes up, it's out of your reach again. And so it ends up being an ever present cycle of money going up. And I'm not saying switch to socialism or anything else. I'm not suggesting that at all. I love capitalism. But I am saying we have to come up with a better solution. Uh, to me it's just a cost of living problem and why everything needs to go up everything is continuing to go up but you know it's all going the, up all the for workers, the consumers it's, it's going up for the consumers but the money's not going to lining pockets of the workers or, the anybody, workers else. or anybody else so the money's it's really curious as to where the money's going. I know a lot of people are probably sitting there going, oh, well, it's lining the pockets of the corporate, of the corporate, you know, CEOs and the, the figureheads, and it may be, or, you know, in some cases, my mo I grew up, my mother was a trucker, uh, and, you know, her company would raise rates on transporting goods well the company's going to raise the rates of how much it costs you to buy said goods but my mother wasn't receiving more money for driving the, the goods to the said location so really the people who are raising the prices may or may not be the ones who are responsible for it in some cases it has actually been the government because you would not believe the number of things they're starting to put on hazardous material lists and you know probably don't need to be there yeah they just don't well I mean I know like paints on there latex paints on there but latex paint really the only reason I know it's on there is because if it spills out they have to use a special chemical to get it up yeah that's what makes it hazardous it's not the paint it's the chemical they have to use to get it off the road so but we're paying for that <laughs> yeah so the government charges extra if you're transporting it through their state so the trucking company charges the paint company more for transporting the paint the paint company charges you more for the paint because they're getting charged more because the trucking company is getting charged more because the state and the federal government's making them pay more. Yep. Lo and behold, miraculously, it's not the it's not the company's fault that made the paint. It's the government's fault that made the that's making this a necessity for somebody else to pay, which it's you every time and. Uh, you know, so it increased the cost of living, but while the rest of, while pays staying stagnant. I don't agree with raising minimum wage, but I agree with fixing the problem. And it's a hard problem to fix, quite frankly, because there's no one good answer. Because like I said, you're not, you meaning society, you're not actually going to get anything good that comes from raising minimum wage because... When you raise it, when you raise minimum the wage, cost of everything else is still going to go back up because businesses are not 
going to take that cut out of their profits. They're going to make sure they're going to make what they want to make. Well, even in this state, like the last big hike uh, in minimum wage we had to the current, actually landlords are raising rent after that because they could. Well, that and I'm sure a lot of them felt, felt they had to because you raise minimum wage, that means people have more money. Well, landlord who normally rents a house for, say, easy math, $400 a month, now can get 475 500 a month for it because this person's getting an extra 100 150 bucks a month so they're going to raise that because the landlord knows his groceries are going to start costing him more money his work on that house is going to start costing him more money yep so he's passing it on he so raising minimum wage is ra is raising the rent that's now putting this person who could barely afford to keep the house, who thought, yay, I can now afford to keep my home, back to a life of uncertainty and what, and wondering what's going to happen to him next. So if you're wondering where we're going with all of this... Straight to hell in a handbasket. That's where. The American dream yeah. is yeah. dead. Well, you know... What I'm getting at with all of it is when it comes to education, when it comes to money, when it comes to getting ahead in life, you cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot rely on your employer, your teacher, or the government, or anybody else to help you get ahead in life. Like, if, if you want to make a certain amount of money, it's up to you to figure out how to make that happen. That and the three rules for working, self-employment. You're fired. You're fired. Yeah, the three rules for self-employment work for money as well. You plan your work, you work your plan and no excuses. Same thing goes for money. You plan what to do with your money, you do what you plan to do with your money, and crap like, oh, my friends wanted to go out. That's not an excuse. It doesn't matter if you, you know, oh, my brother's, my adult brother's birthday party came up. I had to buy a <laughs> gift. No, you knew it was coming. You know, I, I'm a huge fan of Dave Ramsey and his, uh, what is it? I'm thinking of Rainy Day Fund. His savings account? No, the, fi the emergency fund. Emergency fund. You know, even if it takes you six months to build up an emergency fund of like 500 bucks, take six months and build up an emergency fund of 500 bucks. <laughs> not not exactly a difficult concept and when you do that you know now that that people will sit there and say oh well I needed new shoes for a new job no that's not an emergency you knew that was happening you knew it was coming it is very rare that you should be able to justify something like that as an, emer know. an emergency is you were driving down the road and your wheel falls off <laughs> even that if you knew it was going to happen, you should have done something about it. You know, because if you knew that you were having a rotor problem, your wheel was most likely going to pop off, you should have saved up the money and taken it to a mechanic. <laughs> you know, emergency for me is something like got into a car wreck, have a $500 deductible. Oh, look. Yeah. I Here's my $500 deductible. Oh, here, look, I don't have, you know, now I have a means of fixing my vehicle and not being without a car for, you know, because in that particular instance, if you don't have a $500 deductible, but you still have to get to work, it's going to take you how much longer because now you're either having to pay somebody else to take you. You better hope they show up. Yeah, or you're having to take the bus, which the bus costs, you know, public transit costs money. Uber, Lyft, whatever, all cost money. So you saving up for that $500 deductible is going to take exponentially longer now. Bottom line, if, if you want to make more money, if you want to get ahead, if you, you, you got to rely on yourself. If you want to get paid what you're worth, start a business. But to be able to start that business, you got to get educated. You, know, you got to learn business concepts. You got to know what you want to do. 
and you have to get the hell off Facebook. You can't sit around on social media all day to pass the time. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of a video I saw just last night about a guy who broke up two, you know, two kids fighting. All of the kids are, have their phones on, they're videotaping it, and guys giving them this speech about how you, why are you fighting, you know, they start explaining why they're fighting, and he's like, really, these are your friends that are telling you to fight, the ones with their, you know, phones out, videotaping you, beating the crap out of each other, these are the ones you're entertaining, these are your friends. If you want to fight for a living, get your ass to a gym, like a legitimate well, no, it's just kind of, to me, it, it <laughs> kind of, it kind of seemed to go with everything else, kind of seemed to go with work, it's like, you know, you're going to always have people who are just going to sit there and videotape, waiting for that, waiting for you to fall, waiting for you to crash and burn, everybody's waiting for that, you know, but, you know, nobody, this complete stranger had to walk up and interject himself into this situation, for them to realize there was a better way or a different way to go about it. You know, whether it be with your money, whether it be with your business, whether it be with anything, you know, at listening to everybody else trying to tell you you're not going to make it is just, it's... It's not the way to go, for sure. Yeah, be self-depreciation doesn't help you get anywhere in life it will help you stay stagnant it will help you stay where you're at it's really good at helping you be where you're at now but it's not going to help you move forward it's not going to help you become bigger better or greater mm -hmm. so what's the point on you know worrying what's the point on dealing with all the other bs if you don't have to agreed any any final thoughts or notes for the audience throughout this entire show. I've had a boogie up my nose all day. Can't get it. Have I done a good job? Have I done a good job? <laughs> I actually uh, thought that I, was I, just I going to be DJT saying good job. Yeah. That was going to be way better. So. I think that guy, I'm not sure what he's doing anymore. Kind of fell on my face there. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Thank you. That's, that's better. Well, that's pretty much all we have for today. Um, any final thoughts, words? Still have my booger. <laughs> he still has his booger, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, you can send any questions you have about business or freelancing to me through Twitter at the Robin Bull or Facebook.com slash at, well, there's no at. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. Facebook.com slash the Robin Bull. And by the way, for those of you that are sending messages to that page and then, like, either blocking the page or, I don't know what the hell some of y'all are doing, but get it together. Um, for the record, because people keep messaging the page and asking, no, I do not do resumes. No, no, don't want it. No, go away. No, 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 no. Find yourself a professional resume writer or do yourself a favor, save yourself some money. Get on Google. Look up the industry you're interested in. With the words sample resume, hit enter and then press images and you will see a delightful combination of samples that you can use. Although I guess if you want to give me 20 bucks, I'll do it for you. Damn, you're cheap. Like, you know, resume writers go for like 60 bucks an hour minimum, right? 35, 35 if you're desperate. I can do a resume in an hour. Yeah, I'll do it for 60. <laughs> oh, no, wait, I'll cut you a deal. I'll do it for 40. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure, given the time, I can probably get to where I can do two in an hour. 80 bucks an hour sounds great. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Like I said, make sure and send us over your questions and share the podcast. Podcast with a plan to implement the tips you've heard. A great attitude. And you have subscribed to Black Moth Radio to ensure that you never miss out on any of the good stuff. If you're a hopeful work from home freelancer, or even if you've settled in your work from home lifestyle, we hope you've learned something useful today. If you're ready to learn more about the work from home lifestyle, please go check out selfie.com slash the Robin Bull. That is selfie, S-E-L-L-F-Y dot com slash the Robin Bull. Have questions, comments, 
Let Robin know by going to facebook.com slash the Robin Bowl. Thanks for listening. Uh-huh.